Hello, I'm Tanya from English Challenges, and I'm so excited. Today, we're going to talk about this past week's challenge, which was music. Specifically, I'm going to talk about the music idioms from the day to activity. And if you're wondering, Tanya, what are you talking about? That means you haven't subscribed yet. So go to EnglishChallenges.com and sign up. Every Sunday, I send an awesome email with three mini challenges about one topic. And all the topics are super fun, like pizza, pets. Uh, this past week was music. Next week, so tomorrow's email will be about small talk. So now I'm going to do a video going over some of the things that hopefully you were able to learn about. Okay, so today is about music idioms. And again, this is the day two link. And that link had, I think, like 40 to 80 idioms, depending on what section you were reading. I'm just going to go over my top five. So I'm actually going to scroll through the list right now. So go ahead and open that up. Scroll through with me. <laughs> okay, so here we go. By the way, if you're in here and typing in the chat, I'm not sure I see the chat comments, so please don't think I'm ignoring you. I'll try to check them later and respond to any and all of them. Okay, so scroll down on the link, and let's see, number one, hit the right note. Mm, I don't use it that often. Ah, to blow your own horn. So number two, when you blow your own horn, and sometimes casually we say to toot your own horn, that just means when you're bragging. And typically we use it in, in the not way. For example, not to toot my own horn, but how delicious was my lasagna? So not to toot my own horn, but how delicious was my lasagna? So you're effectively bragging about something, you're boasting. But when we use this expression, it just makes it a little more eh, socially acceptable. <laughs> okay, so again, that's blow your own horn or toot your own horn. As you see here, another option is blow your own trumpet. I've never used the word trumpet for this one. So it could be an American thing or maybe just personal preference. So I would say horn. Okay, the next one that I like is it takes two to tango. Yeah, I like that one. The implication with this idiom is that one party is not innocent. <laughs> so for example, um, I know that you say he's always the one who argues in your relationship, but let's be honest, it takes two to tango. Like what's going on with you? So that's saying that, you know, both of you are probably to blame, maybe differently. So what's going on? So it takes two to tango. So again, that means that it's saying that mm, you're both not innocent or free of blame. So free of blame is better. Fit is a fiddle, meh, number five. I don't really use that one. Again, if you're just tuning in, we're on the day two activity. And if you have no idea what I mean by that, it's from my weekly challenge email. So, and it's free, it's amazing. You can sign up at englishchallenges.com or I'll just put the direct link for the sign up in the video notes. Mm, music to my ears. I actually love this one. I do use it pretty frequently. And that means when it's something that you want to hear, not necessarily like something beautiful or pleasant. It's more about you agree with something. Like if someone says, ah, what would be a good one? Oh, if I say, okay, the challenges are totally free, sign up. You could say, oh, that is music to my ears. I've been looking for interesting English resources and I just couldn't find any free ones. So that means you're excited that I'm sharing this news about free resources. <laughs> and I'm shamelessly plugging my challenge. <laughs> That's another expression, to shamelessly plug. That means I'm very openly using this idiom exercise to promote my weekly challenges at EnglishChallenges.com. All right. Let's see what's another one, again, from the day two link. Hmm. March to the beat of your own drum. So if you're following along, it's number 10 from the list. I like this one. This means, okay, depending on how you use it, it can be a compliment, it can be neutral, or it can be kind of a diss, it can be offensive. So when you say someone marches to the beat of their own drum, you're saying they, hmm, they do their own thing. It could be a way of saying they're unique, maybe quirky. And again, those two words, depending on the tone, can also be positive or not so positive. 
Um, for example, if I said, oh, he's so unique, you can, you can tell the hint of sarcasm. I even did the air quotes. But if you say, wow, he's really unique. So the body language and the tone lets you know that I'm using that word in a positive way. So if you say, oh, she marches to the beat of her own drum, but you know what? She's happy. So here I'm saying she does her own thing. It's different than the norm. So the accepted average, I suppose, but she's happy. So I'm, I'm making sure you understand I'm not putting her down. So that's a pretty good one. Let's see. Mm, number 12 was ring a bell. To ring a bell means something that sounds familiar, but we use it when something sounds familiar, but you can't quite remember why. So that's kind of the caveat, the, the extra meaning to it. So if you say, oh, do you know John? And I say, you know what? John, John, the name rings a bell, but no, I don't think I know him. So there I'm saying that it sounds familiar. Maybe it's true, maybe it's not. And in addition to that, or but, I don't remember who he is. So that's me saying, tell me more, or don't tell me because I don't know him. All right, so to ring a bell. Uh, something important, I actually posted this one on Instagram earlier this week, and I noticed that some people were misunderstanding it. It means something sounds familiar, but again, it's usually used to mean, but you don't remember it. So you wouldn't say, um, that movie rings a bell. I really enjoyed watching it. So there it's the wrong context. You would say, oh, that the name of that movie rings a bell, but I'm not sure if I watched it. So that's the context. So when you're learning idioms, my favorite tip is the definition is okay to read. You know, you want to have a better understanding. But the most important thing is look up examples. Make sure that whatever you're using has a lot of sentences or just look up more sentences. Um, I'll link below to one of my favorite things. Um, it's the free dictionary online, but they have an idiom section. And so far, I've found that to be my favorite resource for idioms because they have a lot of examples. With idioms, you really want to understand the context. For example, if you read Ring a Bell and you read, okay, it sounds familiar. But then if you use it literally only for that definition, as you can see, it's not enough. It's a little off. But if you read more examples and you realize, oh, okay, you use it when you don't remember something then you're able to apply it more naturally. At the end of the day, idioms are great to study because native speakers use them. So my suggestion is always for every 10 idioms you review, review them with the intention of comprehension, just so that you don't feel lost. But maybe just pick one, just pick one that you think this one would be easy to use. So for every 10, review them for comprehension, and then pick your favorite one and try to incorporate it because it does help your English sound more natural. But pick the easiest one. Pick the one that feels good to you and then practice it. Find more sentences with it. So that's a good way to efficiently study idioms. That way you expose yourself to a lot in a non-overwhelming way and you make sure that you're able to actually use a few of them which is really all you need. Nobody talks all in idioms. Okay, let me see, I'll just pick one more. Mm -mm -mm, scrolling down. You know what, number 16 for a song, I've never used that one. And I'm just letting you know, it's, it's a good idiom, but I'm just letting you know the ones that you might not hear as much. Um, and it could also be regional. Let's see. Da -da 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 -da. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Oh, okay. My last one that we'll do for today is to chime in. To chime in is when you contribute your opinion, when you talk. So, for example, everyone was chiming in, giving their opinions about what to do this weekend. But I already knew what I wanted to do. So I just let them talk. Uh, that's kind of a convoluted example, but this is off the cuff. <laughs> I didn't prep for this. I wanted to just be here in the moment. Um, so again, to chime in is just to insert your opinion, to add your verbal contribution. It just means to chat, to start talking. <laughs> okay, so those were some of my favorite idioms from that link. Also in the notes, uh, what I did was for the second part of that article, which is pretty long, so if you didn't see it, scroll down to the second half. I love what the author did. They included songs with idioms. 
So what I did was I looked up those songs on YouTube and made a playlist. So what I would recommend is, again, look at the day two article. And you can play the playlist, so play the songs, but look at the article. The author showed the sentence with the idiom and the definition. I mean, that was just, oh, wasn't that so good? I mean, that has been one of my favorite idiom links ever. So you want to listen to the playlist, so you can listen to the song. And I tried to select all of the lyric versions. So most of them have the words on it, so you can follow even easier. And you can read the, the link with the idiom breakdown for every song. Okay, thank you so much for joining me. I'm thinking about doing these every Saturday as a recap. So on Sundays, I send out an email with a challenge. So tomorrow, I'm going to send out one with small talk challenges to help you understand what questions to ask, give you some tips, videos, questions that you can study. And then next Saturday, I'll pop back on here at 1230 Eastern, which is my time. So 1230. And I will try to do a fun small talk activity with you. So if you'd like to prepare for it, sign up. I'll put the link below or go to EnglishChallenges.com. You'll get the email tomorrow and then you'll have more that you can use for our small talk activity next week. Thank you so much for joining and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.